Welcome back to episode two of the Boot Tragedies Pod. We'll get straight, you know, started with some housekeeping. Videos have been, you know, kind of slow lately, but it's that time of the off season, you know, not much really going on. So, you know, I'll get back to that once it's videos to post. Um, also, today we had Saints Media Day, kind of one of the big, one of the bigger ones. Um, all the guys are, you know, back for OTA, so we'll kind of go over that. Um, Almost almost at a thousand subscribers, man. I appreciate each and every one of y'all that's subscribed right now, that's uh, watching this, watch all my past videos. Um that that thousand, you know, that thousand mark is a is a benchmark I set for myself. Um so when I hit it, we hit it, man. So I appreciate y'all for, you know, tuning in and, and subscribing to the channel. I really appreciate that. But now let let's let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into it. Um Thanks Media Day, we can start off with um Caesar Reeves, uh, he had some interesting quotes. How he's uh, focusing full time guard this summer and things like that. So maybe that switch to you know center, maybe it isn't coming. Uh, maybe it's coming later down the line. I don't know. But from everything he said today, I think he's gonna just uh, be be a full time guard for us. Which I'm not mad at. I just thought that you know maybe down the line uh, he start converting to center and maybe move McCoy to guard, but. Seems like the Saints are, you know, are fine with McCoy at center and, and Ruiz at guard. Um, a couple other guys spoke. Uh, Zach Bond, he's he's been con- concentrating a lot at Will linebacker this year, which is interesting. You um, know, he played a lot of Sam last year. I say a lot. He he rarely played, but he practiced that Sam a lot last year. And if you don't know what Sam and Will linebackers are, I'll I'll throw a picture in here so you can kind of you know figure that out, see where they kind of line up. And it's going to be hard for him to play Sam linebacker because that's more of a rushing, you know, type type backer, especially with a lot of teams playing nickel and things like that. So, you know, with Davenport, Cam, Jordan, Granderson, and things like that, it's going to be hard for him to get on the field. So I understand the switch to Will linebacker, more of a stand-up, and you and you play more because it's a two-linebacker set back there basically with, with him and DeMario or Warner and DeMario or Quan and DeMario, whoever, and DeMario because obviously DeMario's, you know, going to be the mic. Um, Taysom and Winston both spoke uh, a good bit. Not gonna go, you know, too too much in detail about what they said, but some some key points. Uh, both of them said that you know they're real good friends, uh, off the field and things like that. They've both been supportive of each other. I mean, it's a competition, nonetheless. They both both are competing to win a job, so you like that. You like uh, you know, two teammates that they know they're in a competition on. <clears throat> excuse me, they know they're in competition for the most important job. You know. In football, one of the best teams in football, and you have to be competitive, but at the same time, end of the day, you're going to be teammates. Someone has to win and someone has to lose. You know, that's kind of how these things go. These things go. So I'm glad that they're being competitive about it. I'm glad that they're being friends about it. Glad that they're supporting each other. I'm glad that they're working out. And hey, man, may the best man win. Like I said, I'll do some more breakdowns on who I think should win once the season gets rolling, preseason game, training camp goes, you know, on. And we'll start to get some video. You know, I'll probably go out there myself, watch some practices if they let, you know, fans, are, if fans are allowed this year. Don't know how they're going to do that, but hopefully we're allowed in there. So I'll go catch some, you know, some games and some practice, practice, uh, you know, sessions. Also, uh, Winston, you know, spoke on how sitting down for a year really made him, you know, reevaluate some things, uh, made him more hungrier, you know, to play and things like that. So this all season, he's just been grinding and grinding and grinding. I mean, Heisman Trophy winner, number one pick, one of the best recruits coming out of high school. This maybe was his first time sitting down, you know, in a long, long time. Because, you, you know, usually every guy in the NFL is the best on their high school team, best on their college team. And then they get to the NFL, and sometimes it's not always the same. So I think it was more of a, you know, reality check for him that, okay, maybe I'm not as good as I thought, or maybe I am. I'm just sitting behind, you know, a legend, obviously, and maybe, you know, it's my time to shine after him. But... Interesting to see, you know, his uh, outlook on that. But he, he says he's been grinding, grinding and grinding this year. So we'll see what that, you know, that summer that summer grind brings brings to the to forefront. Also, uh, Sean Payton spoke, which pleasantly surprised to see him speak. Uh, one thing he did open up with, or not open up with, but he did say that the Saints were 100%, you know, at camp. The Saints are usually pretty good. It's it's a solid foundation of leaders. Uh, even without brief, we still have Cam Jordan, Demario, Malcolm Jenkins, guys like that. That are still you know good good leaders. Uh, Armstead. So 
you know, I'm not surprised that it's 100% attendance at uh, training camp. That's that's a pleasant surprise, though, because most teams, you know, get around 80 85%. Guys are holding off for contracts, you know, this and that. But Saints got a, a 100% guys in there. Still no reps. I've seen, you know, some teams out there, you know, practicing and doing some things, but the Saints are still only weight room, conditioning, and things like that. And I think that'll pay off for us. You know, we've been injured a lot. And things like that, you know, we've kind of slacked towards the end of the year. So maybe, you know, starting a little later, getting a little stronger, getting in better shape will help us, you know, further down the line. So that that will be pretty good. Uh, Peyton was asked about the wide receiver room. He said, he, you know, he loved it and things like that. It's um, They didn't want, want to make any changes, obviously. Uh, we weren't, you know, kind of cap-strapped, but he said he liked the room anyway, even if we weren't. So he liked the guys, man. He said a lot of guys got playing time that – Probably wouldn't have gotten playing time. So, obviously, he's talking about, you know, Deontay Harris, Callaway. Smith played a little more. You know, Jawan Johnson, who's probably converted to tight end, played a little more. So, it's guys it's guys that got reps last year that, that usually wouldn't get reps like that. So, so that's good. Uh, he said Marcus Davenport is healthy. You know, that's the big thing for Davenport. He has to come into the offseason healthy. has to get through the offseason healthy, get through the preseason healthy, and he'll be ready to roll. He said, you know, Peyton, Peyton Turner looked well. Training's going well for him. You know, not anything too specific. But, you know, from the first you know, first media day, you know, you didn't get a lot out of him. Obviously, it's not a lot going on. But I think it was a pretty pretty nice pretty nice just to hear the guys guys talk. Uh, you can go check that out. Elvin Kamara talk, Carl Granderson talk. Uh, obviously, Winston and Jameis talk. So, it's a, it's a pretty good group of guys that talk. And last, on the Saints note, if you know me, you know I'm dying to, you know, do another video, video breakdown. Uh, Dre, Dre Kirkpatrick came in for a visit, uh, you know, with the Saints. He was a cornerback on my short list along with Richard Sherman and a couple other guys. Um, veteran, I think he's 31 now. Not too, too old, so it's not anything crazy where he's like 35, 36, 37. Coming in 31, you can still play. That's right around the age Jenkins was. So uh, we'll see what that, you know, the holds. I'm dying to make a video on him, obviously. So if we sign him. You can guarantee a video is going to come, you know, that same day or probably the next day of uh, Drake Kirkpatrick. He's outside corner, which would be great for us because that's probably where we're lacking. Only, only person we have right now is draft pick Paulson, you know, Debo. Some other guys there too, but, you know, nothing I'm too confident in to throw out there on the field at the moment. So Drake Kirkpatrick would kind of, if we sign him, I'll probably go out on a limb and say, you know, it'll be him and Paulson, you know, competing for that job. And I think he'll he'll win it over, uh, you know, the rookie or whatnot, but you know, you never know, you never know, so uh, yeah, man, that's that's it up on the Saints, man, uh, now we'll switch gears just a little bit here, yeah, last but not least, we have them LSU Tigers, uh, we'll start off with baseball, regionals, oh, crazy, crazy, crazy regionals, um, lost the first game, you know, 3-0, I believe, uh, they had to come back and went four straight, man, it's not, it's not easy to do, it's, uh, it's a rare feat. Um, losing that first game and having to win, win a game, win another game, and then had to beat Oregon twice. It's absolutely insane to do. Uh, Oregon's number 14 team in the country. Also, they had um, Gonzaga in the region and things like that. So it was a, it was a pretty good region. A uh, tough place to play in Eugene. Fans, you know, the LSU fans travel a lot. Didn't really get to travel as much, but they made it out, man. A great game. It's like six lead changes last night. I stayed up super, super late watching that game. Um, I don't think LSU played particular, particularly well, but, I mean, they still got out. That's all all that matters now, man. Uh, 16 teams remaining. We're in the Super Regionals against Tennessee. Hopefully, uh, they swept us early in the year in Knoxville. Hopefully, we can get up out of there and advance to the College World Series. That would be great for them. Uh, Paul Menares last year. Obviously, he's retiring. Um, so, Hopefully they do the damn thing, man. Uh, like I said, all you got to do is give yourself a chance. They gave this, them to themselves a chance um, to do it. Just need to clean some things up in Knoxville, and, and then we'll see You know, we'll see what happens You know, from there. And uh, last but not least, uh, as you can tell, if you've been kind of following this page, it's football and, and track. Th those are my, my favorite two things. Uh, it'll be a lot more track videos this week. Um, if you don't like those, I'm sorry, but it's going to be plenty, plenty track videos this week. Uh, LSU's headed to Nationals. Uh, meet starts off tomorrow. The guy, I think it goes guys Wednesday, girls Fr Thursday, guys Friday, girls Saturday. So they kind of alternate days with prelims and finals or semis and finals, uh, if you want to be correct about that. So 
There'll be a lot more track videos coming up. Uh, both teams have a chance to sweep the NCAA title. So, hey, man, if you're not a track fan, you should, you know, tune in. You support your Tigers, support your hometown team. If you're not from uh, Louisiana still, you know, you can support the LSU Tigers. One of the best teams of all time, you know, NCAA history and track period. It's, uh, like, honestly, if you want to give a, a comparison, it's almost like the 2019, uh, you know, team. Almost like two, 2019 a uh, football team, what I was trying to say here. I got side sidetracked. But, yeah, check out those Tigers, man. It's a, it's a great team. It'll be a great event. Thank you all for tuning in, man. Uh, this, will, this will wrap up episode number two. It's the Boot Tragedies Pod, all sports, all Louisiana, and I'm out.